the 60. You're like, ooh, ooh, I want to put my foot down. This is sign of love. Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Now behind me we have an Audi RS3. However, this one is bone stock, which is quite unusual for my channel. Now this car actually belongs to my marketing manager, James, who you've seen on the channel before, uh, fairly recently when we both got Ghost and Mobilizers fitted, uh, but also uh, quite a while ago when he invited me along to take a look at his Focus RS at the time. He has now sold that car and bought this and uh, well today the aim of the game is to basically give him a few little tips on how and why you should modify one of these he's only just got it and like i said it's bone stock for now as you know there is a hell of a lot of modification opportunities for one of these um, so i think if he would like to um, he could make it into a bit of a beast i i know that a lot of rs3 owners follow me so perhaps any tips and tricks for kind of the best modifications for james let me know down in the comments. But anyway, before we get started, before I introduce you to James, I need to say a few words for the sponsor of today's video, BOTB, and how you at home could win a tuned RS3. Like, well, I would say like this one, but this one isn't tuned. I need to explain. So the guys over at BOTB are once again giving you guys the opportunity to win an apt tuned RS3. For those of you who don't know, BOTB are the dream car competition company who have given away over £34 million worth of cars to date. This week, however, is super special as they've added a £50,000 cash prize to every single car in their lineup. For this week only, you can win your very own apt RS3 plus 50k in cash for £1.60. However, if you fancy something else, BOTB have a total of 180 cars, all with the extra 50k cash prize added. As usual, you only have to be 17 or over to enter, and somebody is guaranteed to win next Tuesday. Good luck. So here it is then, James's gorgeous Nardo Grey 2018 RS3. Now, like I said, he replaced his Mark III Focus RS, actually a tuned one uh, for one of these. I'm sure he'll uh, give us a little bit more info about that once, uh, once I introduce you to him very shortly. But for those of you who don't know uh, much about the RS3, it's a two and a half litre turbocharged five cylinder. Five cylinder, all important. This one is the pre-GPF model and is also the uh, facelifted model. So it's pushing around 400 brake horsepower, 480 newton meters of torque, and 0 to 60 takes just under four seconds. So the late threes, which is ridiculous. And I personally class this uh, a permanent member of the Hyper Hatch series. Now this car, like I said, is finished in Nardo Grey, a very traditional Audi color, but it's actually a no cost option. It suits it so, so well. Really, really nice, even though the car is a little bit dirty today, which we will blame James about. <laughs> um, but with the, uh, the gloss black details and also the little red touches here and there, it looks awesome. Anyway, the main man himself is stood right next to me. James, hello. hello. How are you doing? You all right? Good to have you back on the channel with you me. your new beast. Yes. Um, now, before we get stuck in, actually, I will leave all of James's details down in the description, your Instagram and your YouTube channel, because I know a lot of people want to see more about this thing. It's and uh, car. the modifications which we're going to push you into doing today. Yeah, more than likely, <laughs> more than likely. So, um, we've kind of glossed over the brief uh, stats of the car, the colour and things like that, but this is actually a huge spec, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, it's a pretty nice example, so give us a little walk around if that's right. Yeah, yeah, so obviously you've got the upgraded 19-inch alloys um, with the red brake calipers as well. Um, I'm pretty sure they're optional extra. Basically, it's got everything that you can buy apart from the ceramic brakes um, because, well, it's a used car. I mean, yeah. the previous owner didn't pick them, but to be honest, if I was buying it now, I probably wouldn't anyway. It's like, what, seven grand extra, I think? Yeah, and um, even though you don't need to, like, replace ceramic brakes as often as normal steel brakes, when you do need it, to yes. replace them, 
They're a lot of money. They are very, very expensive. <laughs> so we've also got the gloss black pack, um, which you can probably see, I don't know if you hear, uh, from the Audi logo, yeah. the nice finishing on the Quattro symbols and uh, on the grill. Uh, we've also, my personal favourite thing that I love about this car is just the badges here in the black RS3. Mm. Same on the back, we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, we've got the Matrix LED headlights, so they're the ones that like auto adjust pretty much everything. So like, if you're like automatically on full beam, like it does, and you're driving down the roads, um, it'll keep your full beams on. But it blocks out the lights in different areas depending on what the oncoming car is. No which way. I thought was pretty cool. That's so, very cool. So it still gives you a full, full kind of view. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of light, but then doesn't disturb the other driver on the other side of the road. That's cool. mental. So you can drive down the dual carriageway. Yeah. Uh, with these side lights on. Yeah. On full beam, because they'll be aiming ah, that way, and then the right ages, ones yeah. will probably turn themselves off because they can see the light. No, That's but, mega. Um, what else have we got? We've got the panoramic roof. Yep. Um, which you'll probably see when we go driving. Yep. A bit dirty at the moment, very dusty. <laughs> the car's filthy. Um, inside, we've got the Super Sport quilted seats, uh, finished in red, uh, red mm. stitching. That was a personal favorite of mine, and that's really what I wanted. I saw a lot of these uh, with the diamond, I think it's a diamond white stitching thing, mm. with the black. I wasn't a fan, I love the red on the black. Um, and I think as well, they have a nice wasp joining us. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I think with the brake calipers as well, it just makes the car yeah. look so good. It ties um, in. Mean, it, it's, it's kind of a subtle colour. It's not. It's weird, isn't it? It's it is. I think it is subtle. Yeah. Um, it, it's a weird colour. It's like, it's subtle, but it's a sort of in-your-face subtle. So yeah. people recognise it and they go, oh, okay, yeah, I like yeah, that car. they know. Um, and I, I kind of had the same sort of colour scheme on the ST200, and that's still got you a lot, did actually. You a lot did of notice. Yeah, 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 that's true. So that was your car before the Focus RS, yes. wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, So um, that was yeah. a great car as well. What I think Nardo Grey is, I, I think, I, it's probably the most common colour for an RS3, but I think, so. I think, it's, the, I think it's the best. But everyone loves it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Most people choose it because they like it. So. Yeah, that's it. They're actually quite hard to find them on, on the market, I think, in this colour. They get snapped up pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we go around to the back, we also have the sports exhaust um, and obviously with the gloss black pack you get the nice um, black awesome. coated exhaust I think standard they're just silver slash chrome yeah okay um, nice little the, stealthy options then yeah with the black package mm. that. and then yeah that's my favourite again yeah really really and like the black that. Audi badge as well yeah I mean I love those tips I mean, they're, they're flipping huge they're, they're absolutely huge they <laughs> go <What>? on <laughs> there we go mental and you say this is the sports exhaust yes from battery yeah wicked yeah, it so does it's sound the factory awesome. sports exhaust it does sound really nice. I've heard that, you know, talking of modifications, I've heard if you put a sports cat slash decat on this, yeah, uh, it sounds very monstrous. And yeah. you don't need to change the whole system, it's just put a decat on it mm. and it sounds insane. Yeah, so oh, there, there's a, well, there's a lot of, it's very capable, put it that way. Yes, put yes, it that way, very, yeah. very capable car. I mean, stage one, you can make this 500 brake. Nearly, yeah, nearly, nearly 500 much. About 470. 470, yeah. And that's a safe, safe sort of map. Some yeah. people have got 490, 494 mm. on a stage one, which is mm. like no hardware. Yeah, absolutely nuts. So. Anyway, let's have a little look in the interior because, like you said, it's got the awesome seats with the red stitch. Have a look at that. That looks so good on this camera screen. <laughs> and this car is absolutely mint as well. Bang and uh, Alutsen oh, yeah. system as well. We've got the carbon inlays uh, that come with it. We've got That's cool. And stuff. That's very cool. I mean... Um, it has got a parking and some stuff. I've never used that before. You're just too good at parking, aren't you? Um, I'll just try <laughs> and park out the way. <laughs> <laughs> have a look at this. The Alcantara hand grips with the red stitching here. Even got Alcantara on the gear stick. That's really nice touch. Start stop there, and the panoramic roof as well. Awesome stuff. Well, I tell you what, I'm pretty eager to hear this thing. Oh, so with the with the. Oh, I've got to remember the ghost of Ah, yes, yeah. the ghost of mobilized. That's literally just been fitted. But anyway, yeah, we'll get this start up. Give it a few revs as well because it sounds insane. There we go. I love the burbles you get as you start it up. When you're ready, my friend, give it a few little blips. Ah, he's doing a comfort mode, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. Five cylinder symphony. Mate, it sounds so good. Oh, it's a nice little burble. Now this, like I mentioned, is the pre-OPF car as well, so it's uh, it sounds proper, absolutely proper. Not bad. Sorry, what was that? 
it's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. Love it. So Great good. Car. Yeah, awesome. Anyway, I can tell you're uh, eager to get it back out on the road. So I think what we'll do, we'll get the uh, the GoPro strapped up as normal. We'll go out for a drive and enjoy this lovely day uh, with the RS3 and talk modifications because we need to get this thing up to hmm, how much? 500 brake? I reckon 500 brake's a, a good goal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I think stock is stupidly fast anyway. Yeah, but that's it. We'll see that. Yeah. Anyway, wicked. Let's uh, let's hop in and uh, go for a nice little drive. When's it going? Stage five. Stage five. <laughs> um, yeah, two months. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so obviously, I want to kind of utilise the warranty it's got left on. It's got yeah. till March. Um, and next I'm, year. Yeah, yeah. Till March next year until I fancy doing anything to it. Mm. And I'll be honest, it's, it's stupidly quick stock. Like you just yeah. felt that acceleration yeah. there. Um, the, the way it picks up speed, it's so linear. Yeah, it is. Um, and it just carries on going. It's so effortless as well. Yeah, this this is stupidly fast. <laughs> it is. Um, it really is. It's actually probably worth noting that your Focus RS was not standard. No. So my Focus RS actually runs the ran the exact same power as this, three hundred and ninety four brake horsepower. Mm. Is that stage two, right? Stage two for mount tune. Yeah. Um, some people would say the mount tune aren't probably the best tuners. Um, they're reputable, which is why people go to them. But there are there were issues. Um, I experienced, unfortunately, experienced it. As other people who yeah. um, have been with the channel, uh, your channel for a while, would have probably known from when we did a video on it last time. Yeah, the engine blew up. Literally just after you ran it in again, that's when we did that video. Wasn't yeah, it? The, the second engine. Yeah, <laughs> and it was not fun. Mm -hmm. um, to, to be fair, RS ownership experience wasn't great. Yeah. Um, after that, I kind of thought, you know what, I'm kind of scared to even drive this thing hard. Yeah. Whereas this, you can just, it's like, it's a point and shoot. You just know that when you floor it, you're gonna go. <laughs> and you definitely do. You really do. <laughs> really poor. Really do. Like to the point where it makes you feel sick. Yeah, it's one of those cars where, actually, when I was in this stage three, like 700 plus brake horsepower, yeah. I, I, I said a, a, a quote in oh, that video, loss. That is one of those cars where you accelerate and it makes you, you it makes your head go weird. Yeah, you're like, wow, okay. And I mean, if you're darting between like country roads, yeah, um, it does get a bit like it's not as I wouldn't say it's as planted as what the RS was. It mm -hmm. doesn't instill as much confidence as what the RS did going around a corner. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whether that's just because of the way the car's set up. <laughs> but you do. You got to be careful. I think, yeah. but even the RS, it was a bit of a monster. Mm, Sometimes absolutely. you get it hit back in, next thing you know, the back end slid out a little yeah. bit. In fact, this, correct me if I'm wrong, is the same road where we filmed the video on. Yeah. 
and obviously the RS is a completely different all cross, <laughs> completely different beast in the sense that it's so raw and brutal at all times. I mean, this yeah. is bumpy, but I mean that car was brutal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It's it's not a usable hot hatch. But this it kind of just excels in every scenario, yeah. which you'd expect from a four-wheel drive. What a lot of people say about these, it's the the grown-up hot hatch. Someone who wants a car that they can daily, to, you know, work. Um, it's quick. It's refined. It has everything you'd want as I don't know, a gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. A gentleman's car. I don't know. You're not a gentleman. Yeah, I'm quite <laughs> not. But you're a yobbo. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's one of them weird things, isn't it? So. I, I don't know. I think with the RS, it was very much that was a driver-focused car. This yeah. is more of a driver-focused car to the person that wants it every day. Yeah. The yeah, RS, yeah. I felt like if you were gonna if you're gonna own an RS, that thing wants to be driven. Yeah. This thing will do both. Mm. You can happily cruise along in comfort mode and feel like a completely standard car, mm. um, and even in comfort mode, you, can, you know, it'll put your foot down and it enjoys still it. Still but go, yeah. um, you know, stick into dynamic. Feels nice. Feels a lot nice. Um, a lot nice. That's great English. <laughs> Good English, my friend. <laughs> I can't see. You clear my way. <laughs> so quick. It's like how fast. Like the RS just can't do that. We'd still be back at the junction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The RS just cannot do that. Uh, I must say our fuel uh, consumption since leaving is at 13.4 miles ah, per gallon. That's good. We need to get it down to sink figures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just loved it a bit. Yeah. Got to get into a six. And you're like, oh, I want to put my foot down. This is sign of love. So any modified RS3s out there, comment down below some suggestions for modifications which you think that James would benefit having on his car once we go back through the junction. <laughs> because, I mean, like you said, it's quick as it is. But it is effortless. There is some modifications undoubtedly out there which would just kind of refine it. Yeah. Just kind of give it a little bit more. I think... Um you think how fast this thing is as it is like you imagine sticking another 70 brake horsepower mm. and making it 600 newton meters at all yeah or like, sticking another 300 horsepower on it yeah <laughs> like, like the one you reviewed before yeah. that, that was a bit of a monster oh, mate. um i don't think i'd ever take it that far yeah um i get bored of cars quite easily i promised myself or i told myself <laughs> <laughs> i would like to own an audi r8 by the time i'm 27. Oh. um so three years away yeah. Well, three and a half. Mm. Two and a half, actually. Oh, clock is ticking. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how long I'll keep this for, but I'm in, definitely enjoying it. And if this gives any flavour to what an R8 is, yeah. Um, then I'm in for a treat. Well, it's often called the mini, like a baby V10, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, practically is really. I love it. <laughs> Traction button coming up there. Really? Traction light coming up saying the you know, <laughs> trying to get traction. No, nah, mate, but congratulations. <laughs> it is one hell of a beast. That was fast. That was fast. That, that, that really kicked that back there. Going down to second then. Yeah, it's blitzed. Anyway, I think we're going to wrap things up there, dude. Once again, congratulations and good to get you back on the channel. As yes. Well. Um, yes. Perhaps when we do, uh, well, when you do a few little bits to it, then we can get it back. Do a bit of an update. I think so too. In approximately one week, when it's running <laughs> lots of power. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned earlier on, all of James's links, his Instagram, and his YouTube will be linked down below. Um, but that is it for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures 